And we're back, and this is our discussion point or our discussion topic. And this week, our discussion topic is shows that we we are catching up. We want to catch up on um, shows that we didn't get. You know, they might have fallen off our radar. We just might not had time to TV and all that. And with the the regular TV series season um, coming to a break, we have a little bit of extra time in our days. Like I was mentioning beforehand, you know, it's like if you look at just from my standpoint i mean i got what you know easily 12 to to 20 hours i would say free up from the this mid-season break and you know of shows like probably about a week yeah, it's it's basically and, you've got a you've got a winter holiday. You probably have a couple of days off. You're gonna have to spend some of it with the fucking loved ones because that's that's the bullshit that happens. Yeah. Uh, here comes Santa Claus just to ram it up right your fucking ass. And so then you you just <laughs> like all right, uh, we we've 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 cooked our Christmas goose and we've we've pulled all the wrapping to the recycling bin, and now I get to turn on the TV and not shower for three days. And just build up a good stench. I'll have the cats stick into my body and watching a lot of, of TV. So the question is, Gregor, what is the show that you think you're gonna go to first? First, okay. Um probably I'd probably have to say Black Mirror. Um just because I've I've still have only seen the first two episodes. But it quickly became one of these shows where I'm like, all right, it's on Netflix. I can catch it at my own pace um, when I'm not, you know, wanting to stick around with these stories that are being told, you know, at, you know, with all the superhero shows that I'm watching and stuff like that. Um, so that's probably the big one right there is, you know, catching up on Black Mirror. Um and I've heard that. a lot of people talking more and more about Black Mirror. Uh, the third season came out just recently, yep. so a lot of people are jumping back in. But yeah, I've, I've heard you mention it when you were first watching the show before. I, I'm surprised, but understand why you haven't uh, stuck it out. On rails, but it's like you choose how the rails go. So you only go so far and you're like, all right, I'm here. I'm hearing the ocean. I see no ocean. And then you look up to your left. This is the opening stuff. You look up to your or to your right. Sorry, and ginormous blue planet. And I'm like, holy shit! And I I spent a good five minutes just looking around it. Just like my mom started laughing as I was walking. I'm like, shut up! I'm playing a game <laughs> because you look stupid just sitting there looking around like just gazing at the wonder that these people made yep. but yeah, that's Annie Amber and um, so Corey you have a movie I did I, I, I'm trying to get through a few things that I, I've been wanting to catch up on this year and this one uh, came out unfortunately did not do well either uh, when it hit the theaters it's from Shane Black, and it's called The Nice Guys. It stars Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. And now I'm not a huge Russell Crowe fan. I can't think of much stuff that I've watched him in since Gladiator, honestly. But I, I like Gladiator a lot. It's just that it seemed like all the stuff he kept doing was just, uh, Russell Crowe's kind of a dick. Uh, Ryan Gosling is another one. I, I have nothing against the guy. I just can't say that I've seen him in too many things. Uh, I watched that one thing where all the the people ripped up or got all the money from like crashing the housing market, and he was good in that. But he always just kind of comes across a little bit, you know, prickish, little smarmy, little above everybody because he's he's very pretty. He's a pretty man, uh, but he's perfect for that kind of character that he plays in this. He's he's a he's a detective who's not really good at detecting things. He's got a kid who kind of knows that he's full of shit. Uh, his daughter, Russell Crowe, is more of a a muscle guy who goes around and he makes money by getting people to back the fuck off of other people. You know, they pay him to kind of get in the way of people who are bugging him. 
And it's if you've seen anything by Shane Black, and in particular if you've seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, uh, or even to a certain degree if you've seen Iron Man 3, you get an idea of what kind of movie this is. It takes place in the 70s, uh, so it's era-specific, but it feels very much like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, uh, which is an excellent movie. Uh, if you've not seen it, that's uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer. This one, I was really into it. I, and and it's it's kind of like familiar. So I can't say that it's as good as the other movies that have come before it because it's just similar to the other movies before it. But I laughed my ass off through most of it. it it's just that kind of shit keeps happening. Um because it's there's a lot of things to to watch and new things are always coming up that kind of grab your attention and that's that's part of the problem it's not like the show isn't good but the show is not the priority especially when it's on Netflix where you can feel like it's always going to be there and so it's, Netflix, it's, Netflix it's original like it's not even going to switch over to fucking Amazon or something it's like no i know where i'll be able to find this it, it it's it's available to me yep. i just have other things that are on my list first yeah, and I, I will say also on my list, um, it's a segue. It's your, it's the your nerding out, which is the nice guys. I mean, I have that on my, you know, as one of the things that I want to watch. Um, I enjoyed the trailers and all the TV spots that I saw, and then you saying this, I'm like, yep, that's what I'm gonna want to watch. But what about you, Corey? What is the what is the one show that you are wanting to catch up on first? What's probably going to wind up first because it's short, uh, and I've already put it on my Plex, is a show called Happen Leonard. And Happen Leonard is another kind of buddy comedy that takes place uh, out of time. I think this is in the 80s, maybe even before that. It might be 70s. And it's uh, two guys who work kind of like out in the fields doing stuff, but they they're they're kind of hard hard luck guys um thomas jane is is one of them and uh his best friend is a african-american guy who has been to war and everything he's also gay so he's dealing with prejudices for a couple of different things but their relationship is is the primary of the show but it also deals with uh hap's ex-wife comes back into his life and tells him that there is a car that's been sunk somewhere that somebody had stolen a bunch of money. It was lost in the vehicle. The guy was never able to find it again. He got arrested, and he told her now husband in prison kind of where he best remembered it being. And so she goes to Happen Leonard to help them to to help her recover the money. And yeah. it's it's I think it's like a six episode season uh so it was short but it looks really good and really fun and it kind of reminds me i would watched terriers recently and i'd been looking forward to that this was kind of maybe my follow-up to terriers so that is probably what i'll get to first nice um i think another one that i'm gonna that i'm probably gonna end up watching is one that's been out for a while and it sort of falls under the Mind, there's a little bit of a trend here if you if you notice this. Um, it's Man in the High Castle. I mean, I've heard, I saw the pilot, I enjoyed the pilot, but I always said that what is honestly gonna it's gonna take for me to to subscribe to Amazon Prime would be the Grand Tour. I'm subscribed to Amazon Prime because of the Grand Tour, um, and. It's in there. They're doing the HBO style where they play uh, commercials beforehand of uh, their other programming. So there's, you know, the one that I might check out the pilot for that Good Girls Revolt uh, period piece. But the other one that I've seen, I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, and that's Man in the High Castle. I'm like, I need to watch all of season one to get caught up with season two before, you know, a lot of the, these people that I respect who have shouted the praises of man in the high castle start saying, you need to watch man in the high castle. Um, and all that. I mean, it's 
one of those that I'm like, I, I feel like I would like it even though I haven't read the book, but Oh wait, please tell me season two isn't out already. Son of a bitch. I think it is. Oh man. <laughs> if I can treat my escape from reality by watching something about Nazis when it's so real world right now, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I just, I, 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 I'm trying to tune that shit out of my eyes. Um, but, but I get oh, it. No. And it, it looks like a quality show. And I've heard people like Tom Merritt has talked about it. Uh, he was really excited. Now he read the book. Uh, so he was yeah. really excited it was coming out. And I think I've seen him uh, talk about it a little bit more after it came out as well. So I, I, I totally get it. I, I'm still not an Amazon Prime subscriber. I still haven't made that commitment to them. Although it's always tough around the holidays where it's like, maybe I should do the two month sign up for free or whatever so I can try it out and and like get free shipping all the shit that we're ordering from there. Yeah, honestly, the because I'm doing just the $8.99 a movie thing or you know just the prime video for 8.99 a month i'm not doing the hundred dollars you got the the prime for the whole year so you know how much you add up to with your 8.99 a month though no i know that's where i'm probably with tax return is that'll be one of the things that i do is all right i'm going to switch it over to to the hundred dollars get the free shipping get the uh, you know, all the other little things that they throw in there as well. Um, but I mean, it's like there, I'm finding a lot of the original stuff on the, on Netflix, on Amazon, very appealing. Um, and th- and that's, that's partially the problem is like, you know, the Dana Carvey stand up special, uh, single white 60 or single white man or, what was it white male 60 so appealing is it's an, a one hour stand up special i don't have to sit there and go all right i'm going to devote my whole weekend it's i'm going to devote my evening low commitment yeah yeah that that's that's part of where i am so this season uh one of my favorite shows of of last year came back and i'm super excited for it and yet i have yet to open up and start watching it and that's the second season of mr robot now mr robot yep. is is pretty heavy watching and it, it's not like it was a detriment but watching it the week to week that i did when it was originally on is not as compelling as getting to watch all the episodes at once but i've had them sitting in my dvr since the second season finished and there's certainly not a lot of people are out there spoiling it, but it's one of those things that I'm taking chances on every day by not going back and watching it. And I know I've seen some things like there was the uh, 80s style horror video that they released that was some extra footage from it. And I saw that and it didn't really give me clues about the season so much, but it's one of those things that, again, I'm getting exposed to things and I'm psyched for watching it. I just, it's a commitment to... 13 episodes or whatever it is for the season. And so that's always the big deal. But I, I that's probably going to be the next thing on my list with with the free time is I'm going to be looking yeah. at shows like that. Yeah, Mr. Robot is one of those shows I feel like you could get the little things that they throw up like they did with the the horror movie that they made and still be completely lost. And and it work you know pretty well, and I, I like because I know this is one that's on my list as well. I don't have, I might end up having to do the whole second season, um, because I think I ended up at episode six. I don't know the last episode I remember is the one that they did in the style of a '90s sitcom. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say because that spoils nothing except they did an episode in the style of a 90s sitcom. Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know. I think... Do you have one more? The other, other one I'm thinking is, is what I'm doing now. Or it's two of them that I'm doing now. Uh, the White Rabbit Project, which I mentioned last week, I'm getting, I'm watching more of the episodes of 
So that's probably what I'm going to be watching throughout the week. Um, I'm rewatching Newsroom and then um, Mozart in the Jungle season three came out and I've been watching that and that's been enjoyable as well just because like I watched the first two seasons and just the stories that they're telling there is it's very beautiful very beautifully done and I mean you get Jason Schwartzman in there which I've you know I love him on blunt talk and it's sort of like his character but let's focus him more on um his it's his character on blunt talk but let's for, focus him more on uh you know classical music which is just great um blunt talk is another one I think I've only got like one episode to go I've been watching them as they come out but I it, it's airs on Sunday night so it gets lost in the walking dead shuffle <laughs> zombie pun yeah um <laughs> One show I will not be catching up on is The Walking Dead. Fuck that noise. Fuck it hard. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, I'll go with your cheat. I'll go with your cheat of shows that haven't been like sitting there burning a hole in our DVRs, but are pretty new or brand new in some cases. One I think isn't even quite out yet, although it should be hitting soon, is the Christmas episode of Sense8 is coming out. Oh, uh, yeah. Probably, I think, this week. I'm very, very jazzed up for that. Sense8 was one of those things that just blew my mind with how good it was and easily became one of my favorite programs at a time that I was, it had things competing with it like Daredevil and and Jessica Jones and, and Luke, Luke Cage since that. It's like, where the hell did this show come from? It, it was just beautiful. It was stunning. The characters were incredibly well realized. Uh, I'm I'm very, very excited for that. But the other thing that I'm excited for, and I don't even know why, because I know literally nothing about it, is a show that just premiered on Netflix this week called The OA. The OA. And nothing. I know really nothing. I, I can see certain people are in it, like uh, Scott Wilson, who was on The Walking Dead uh, back when it was watchable. And, and it looks... Like, I I could not begin to explain what the, the plot or anything is, but that's kind of how I came into Stranger Things. And that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Netflix is going to blow my mind again in the way that Stranger Things did. Because Stranger Things, possibly my favorite show of the year. Um, although Fargo, second season, I think was this year. So it's, it's, it's got a, a competition. But if this thing can do like three quarters of what stranger things did for me uh i'm going to be very excited to end and i think that that's exactly what i want i want something that i can just sit and just blow through all the episodes in one pass and just you know have my mind blown a little bit or just lose myself to it for hours on end and and tune the rest of the world out and that's 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 kind of the exciting part about having that little bit of, of vacation time, that little bit of, of time to yourself where you can just close the shades and uh, fill up on pizza rolls, I guess. No, yeah. It's one that it's one of those shows that I've seen, and I was trying to figure out the Brit Marlin, like that name sounds so familiar, and I'm realizing she was on the show I mentioned a year or two ago, uh, Babylon, over on Channel 4 that was done by Danny Boyle. Ah. That's really good. Um, but this is one I saw that. I'm like, that looks interesting. Not what I'm here to watch. <laughs> though. <laughs> That's the thing is, is like you have to choose your battles. I, I still have all of Atlanta on my DVR too. And that's another one I'd like to get into. And that is probably shorter because I think they're half hour episodes. Um, but again, conceptually, I don't really know what I'm in for with it. I just know that. It's got Donald Glover, and I really like Donald Glover, so I'd like to give yeah. it a shot. Yeah, uh, Atlanta. I saw the first episode, and it is. It, I don't know if I want to put it on my list, just because my list is going to quickly turn into uh, this is everything right. that I'm going to try to binge in a week. And you have to um, you have to walk the line between feeling like you're watching something because you want to watch it, and you're watching something because you feel obligated to watch it. 
Yeah. And that's that's part of it is I've got those Mr. Robot episodes on my DVR and I want to watch it because it's Mr. Robot. I don't want to watch it just because it'd be nice to clear off 13 hours from my DVR system. Yeah. No, yeah, and that's that's cool. And I mean I think the only other thing that's left to say with these is you know, there's a lot of shows. I mean, we we say it all the time. Uh you know, there's just too much TV out there, too much good TV out there. We're we're and, in a, a magical point of there is a lot of great content. There's a lot of shit content. And yeah. that, that's why we, we go back and forth. Now I'll I'll be the one to argue stuff is shit which maybe Gregor doesn't think is shit. And that's okay. It's all right that not everybody is gonna agree on what's good and what's bad, but you get so many choices, you get to find what drives you you get to find the stuff that you really love and if the stuff you love is reruns of the big bang theory or um two broke girls that's okay that that's not going to be what i want to spend my time watching but at least now you have the ability to do that mm -hmm. and that's pretty amazing you know compared to when i was growing up and you just watched what was on you just kind of sucked it up and this is what what's on tv right now i i think it's really incredible that I am a science fiction fan, for instance. I'm not, but I sort of am. And so I want to find science fiction stuff. And there is just a wealth of it. There is so many things. Uh, if you're a person who likes time travel, I feel like time travel, if I ever see another fucking time travel plot, I will burn myself to the fucking ground. But if you like that, there is so much shit with time travel. It's just, it's insane. You feel like you're in a fucking loop yourself because there's just like time travel show time travel show time travel show it does, but cool you know does, cool for you if that's your jam do, are, so are you going to be catching yourself on fire this sunday when the doctor who christmas special comes out uh i'm going to burn the connection to that channel because i'm probably not going to fucking watch it <laughs> but no i mean it's so all this is being said as um as a great segue here to the ending of the show. Um, and this is a sort a call to action for you guys. What shows did we not, did we not mention that you think we need to be watching? Um, this is us giving you homework to give us homework. Um, and we have a couple ways you can do that. You can email us mail at elsners.com or you can leave us a voicemail by calling 805-328-3966. Um, you could find all the subscribe subscription links are on our page at gncast.com slash subscribe. And um, you could join us on our Facebook page under Galactic Network. Um, and you can follow the show on Twitter at Else Nerds, the network at Galactic Netcasts. Um, our producers, Beatmaster80 and Mr. Underscore Fusion. Um, you could follow me on Twitter at that Gregor. Corey, where can they find you? Uh, you can go to donestcomics.com. That's where I help publish uh, comics relating to and by Levi Krauss and friends and sometimes me. Nice. And I, the only thing that's left to be said is this has been a Don't Tell Glenn production. We will see you next week. Or else. We won't. <laughs>